welcome welcome back to the channel everyone it's been a little while but i've got a lot more videos on the way welcome deborah she's going to be helping us out today thanks for joining us today we have a lot to talk about we're going to be going over aspects of the uniform so of course we'll be starting with the pants the knickers are pants that start below the knee have suspenders that go over the shoulders they're made of the traditional white and this is a traditional part of the uniform it's important to have good shoes there are shoes that are designed specific for fencing, but they're not really necessary. Oftentimes those brands can be quite expensive, and a good athletic shoe or a running shoe is just as appropriate. The plastron is a special half jacket. It goes underneath the regular jacket and is usually cross-weaved from the jacket. This adds extra protection, especially in the case of broken blades. There are usually one or a few different D-rings that a strap is used to tie the plastron in place. Now we've got that on, let's look at the jacket. There are many types of jackets because there are many types of manufacturers. They have a variety of fabrics that are used, including cotton and polyester. There are quilted types of jackets that are a little thicker and add a little more padding but I tend to prefer the non-quilted types. They breathe a little easier and keep you a little cooler when you've been fencing for a long time. Jackets can have zippers in the front or the back. If in the front, then they are specific to which hand you fence with. In this case, Deborah's using a left-handed jacket, so the zipper is on the right side. It's also permissible to have an emblem or symbols on the opposite arm from your blade arm on your jacket. Now let's look at the body cord. The body cord is what's used to connect your blade to the scoring equipment. In this case, Deborah has in hand a body cord for a foil. She holds it in her left hand and puts her jacket on. This is probably the easiest way to get it into your jacket. The other end of the body cord will need to be looped to the back of the jacket, kind of like a tail. Slip the rest of your jacket on and zip up. Make sure to attach the Velcro around the neck to protect yourself. The Lame is a specialized jacket. It's made of conductive materials. There are many varieties that range in different pricing. The more expensive type tend to last longer, where the cheaper versions tend to be made of materials that oxidize a little easier which means that they'll wear out faster. Deborah's wearing a foil lame. We know it's for foil because it covers the foil's target area of just the torso. The arms, head, and legs are off target. The saber also uses a lame, but it covers the target areas of the arms as well. Your glove has an opening to allow the body cord to rest in place and move freely in your jacket. place on your helmet, and you'll notice that there is a conductive strip on the bib as well. This was a rule change back in 2011 that allowed for target area to be extended to the bib. Secure your mask in place by folding the tongue to the back of your head. This extra cord is used to connect the conductive material of your mask to your lame. There is a tag on the back of the lame that this clip will attach to, and another tag on your mask. This should be attached on the side opposite your blade arm to avoid any tangles with your opponent's blade. There's another clip on the end of your body cord. This will connect on your jacket. Look under your lame and you'll find another D-ring. Connect to this. Now hook your body cord from your glove end up to your blade. The prongs slide into place easily. There is a clip that holds it in place. To release it, notice the button on the inside part of the handle. Push the button and it releases easily. Now we're ready to fence. This is an electric foil blade. There are several parts. The button, the foible, which is the flexible weak end of the blade, 
the forte, the strong, non-flexible part of the blade, the bell guard, the sockets, where your body cord attaches, and the pistol grip. The pistol grip is a variation grip. In this case, I'm using a Visconti grip. Here is a traditional French grip. The three types of blades in Olympic fencing include the épée, the foil, and the saber. Each have different rules, where the épée has full body contact, the foil, only the torso and bib are on target, and the saber has the torso up, including the arms and helmet. Electric blades are specially forged with a divot to allow for a small wire to be inserted. The saber is the most unique of the blades. It has a unique handle to guard the hand from hits on the side of the blade. It also has a unique tip, a button hook at the top, instead of a traditional button or a blunted end. To hold this blade, the thumb goes on top. You'll use your thumb and pointer as your main hinging points to guide the blade. The other three fingers act as manipulators. To hold a pistol grip, the thumb goes on top with the pointer on the bottom. In this case again, the other three fingers are manipulators, holding the blade in place and giving you support. But the main action comes from the pointer and thumb. We've decided to put together a strip just for you, using tape in this case, because it's lighter and easier to set up quickly in any setting. The strip, or pisse, is quite long. A regulation fencing strip requires the pisse to be 14 meters long and between 1.5 and 2 meters wide. The last 2 meters on each end are hash marked to warn a fencer before he or she backs off the end of the strip, after which is a 1.5 to 2 meter runoff. There is also a center line and two on guard lines to mark where the fencers will begin fencing. In this case, we're using green tape to indicate the on guard positions. The pink tape are our warning lines. This whole setup took about three minutes. To make it easier to see our blades, we've marked them with this high-colored tape for your benefit. Now we're ready to fence. When it comes to getting your own fencing equipment, you have a lot of options. A simple Google search will show you these many different manufacturers and providers. Most sites will have a shopping tab. Click on that and then go to the starting sets, as indicated here by the red arrow. You'll have a lot of options for starting sets. Some will have electric options and others will be just the equipment needed to fence in what we call a dry bout. That is, competition that is done without electronic scoring equipment. Pay close attention to the options that are available so that you know what you're getting and what you're missing. Here's an example of one of the ordering forms. It will include things like the mask size, the gender, the size of jacket, the size of glove, a plastron, the size of the blade you're using. Size five is the standard blade size for most fencers, but young fencers under the ages of 10 might need smaller blades. There are also several options for different kinds of grips. French and pistol grips included. You can choose from a variety of carrying bags as well, in different colors. Most sites also have a sizing chart to help you decide which size to get. But honestly, I've had some difficulty with these kinds of sizing charts. I can't myself attest to their accuracy. It's usually best to talk with a fencing coach or go to a fencing school and have them get the sizing right for you. For myself, I'm six feet tall and weigh about 150 pounds. I wear a size 42 jacket with a medium mask and a large glove and a regular size plastron. Children under the age of 10 usually wear coats that are 34 to 38. They usually will wear a small helmet up until the age of 10 or 11 and use a small to medium glove. But keep in mind all of these figures are conditional on the manufacturer you're using. Sizes will run smaller or larger depending on which brand you've chosen. Hi folks, 
I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. We appreciate your support, and also think about going to our Patreon page. You can support our channel and help us provide more content like this in the future. We have a lot more videos on the way, so keep in touch.